This here, ladies and gentlemen, is a world first. Why cook a whole ostrich? That's a good question. First of all, this meat is delicious. Tomorrow is my son's birthday, and I thought, why not? That's the first reason. This is a real celebration. I'm gonna feed a lot of people with this bird. Secondly, it's delicious. I like to challenge myself. I'm intrigued to see what this will turn out like. Thirdly, one of the things about ostrich is it is an expensive meat. It's quite expensive to rear. It is a costly meat. And by doing it whole, we are going to get all of the meat. We're gonna get like 100% yield off this bird because we can pick every morsel of this beautiful bird off the bone. And by the end of it, there'll be a pile of bones, a pile of skin, no meat left, 100% consumption of the edible parts of the ostrich. So we are really like nose to tail, beak to tail eating of this wonderful bird. We are going to do it justice. So I'm just off to pick up the ostrich. They're gonna slaughter it this morning. It's about two hours outside of Nairobi, uh, where we're headed, out to a place called Isinia to pick up our ostrich. It's called the Maasai Ostrich Farm. And so begins the three-day journey or adventure of getting a whole ostrich onto a plate. Nervous anticipation, I think that's what I'd call it. I haven't a bloody clue what I'm doing, and I'm making it up as I go along. I'm actually quite excited. Here we are, the Maasai Ostrich Farm. Let's go pick up our ostrich. Ah, right, we're here. Comparison, look at the size of that. I've cooked an ostrich egg before, and honestly, it is amazing how much is in this. An incredibly hard shell, but the amount of egg that's in an ostrich egg is quite overwhelming. I think it's about 24 chicken eggs to one ostrich egg. That's an old tray of eggs. Amazing. I mean, look at that. Just things of beauty. So we're gonna go have a look at some of the ostriches. So these, these guys are about six months old, these ostriches. Check them out, they love this stuff. Gosh, they're aggressive. And that beak ooh, is a deadly thing. Generally, they're slaughtered between eight, eight months to a year. Ah! <laughs> Greedy ostriches. This is bad news if you're an ostrich. Literally got here as it's happening. As you can see, these guys have just been slaughtered. They're just, they're just preparing them. They're gonna gut them and take the, the, long, the shank off, the long bit of the leg, which is basically useless. They're gonna keep the neck for me, they're gonna gut it, and we're gonna keep the skin on. But there's been a bit of a discussion between us all about what we do with the skin. They wanted to skin it for me, which is generally how they do it. I want the skin on, because when we drop this thing in the oven, the skin is gonna protect the meat. If we took the skin off, the meat may dry out. So the skin's gonna really act as a sort of protective layer for the meat as it cooks. They're like, they're a bit like, no, 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 you've got to take the skin off. It won't cook. So it, I don't know, let's see, they may be right, I may be wrong. We will figure it out. That's obviously the heart and the liver, which I am definitely taking. They are like super prized bits. Here we are. Fresh off the farm, as they say. But the next thing really is to brine it now. It's an essential part of the process when cooking big chunks of meat. It does so much. The primary thing is it retains moisture. It's juicier, more flavorful, more tender. Easy. I use simple brine, bay leaf, coriander seeds, clove seeds, sugar and salt. And it's an 8% brine. If you want to know more about brining, click on the video below. Uh, there's a link here. The thing about ostrich, I mean, as I rub my hand over this skin, this is not like poultry skin. It's really quite dry and tough. And you know, this is a very protective outer layer for the bird. It's pretty much inedible. We're gonna keep it on the bird to protect it during the cooking process because the meat underneath it is very delicate. Now, when we brine, it will also be quite a restrictive barrier from the brine to getting to the meat. But I'm hoping that the brine will go through the, the feather pores into the meat through the feather pores, as well as the body cavity. Now, I think I've got about 60 or 80 liters of brine here. So this is gonna go into this 8% brine 
for about 24 hours before the next stage. This thing weighs 45 kilos, just in case you're wondering. When you see me struggling to get this off the table and probably enlisting the help of three other people, you'll know why. Okay. Grab the wing. Yeah. Okay. We have a small problem, which is a big bird. We need a bigger container. I have a wheelie bin. Yeah, that's gonna work. Ugh. Brian. So, uh, 60 liters was not enough. We're gonna need 100 liters. So we'll make another 40 liters, top it up, stick it in the fridge, 24 hours minimum. We're done, good. Okay, here she is, 27, 28 hours later. It's been sitting in the brine. I'm very excited to get this out. This thing is gonna weigh a lot now, I mean, because it's got all the water in it. I'm gonna have to, Kennedy, <laughs> enlist the uh, services of somebody here. Okay, let's pick it up. Ready? Uh, try not to break the wings. The skin is completely tightened up as a result of the brining. The brine has had a pretty profound effect already on the skin, it's really kind of, tightened it up. It's going to be really interesting to see what it's done to the meat after it's cooked. Part of the nose to tail eating of an ostrich, or should we say beak to tail. This is the uh, ostrich's penis that we've removed. No, it's not. This is the ostrich's neck. Now, what I want to do with this is to turn this into a really nice stock. Very, very simple, classic stock making ingredients, carrots, onions, leeks, bay leaf, thyme, garlic, and then it's gonna be fragranced and cooking with star anise, fennel, and lemongrass, so a bit of an Asian touch. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop this up with the saw. Combine it with this, which we call mirepoix. Okay. A little bit of oil. Okay, so I get everything in there, including the spices and the aromatics. The spices, particularly the star anise, the fennel and the bay leaf, are really gonna wake up in the oven. Waking up your spices. It's gonna get really beautifully fragrant. That's it. Bang it in the oven for 20 minutes on a hot heat. Roast the hell out of it. Get some caramelization. Smells so good. So now I'm just going to deglaze with some red wine, get it all over, and then get that into a saucepan and boil it for about 24 hours. Again, you just keep cooking it, keep cooking it, keep cooking it. You extract tons of flavor, you extract all of the gelatin, collagen, marrow in the bones. You get a nice thick sauce, and then we'll turn that into something even better. Next time on Fearless Food. How to get it in that oven is another story. We'll only know in 14 hours if this is going to be a complete disaster or a massive success. What's in there? An ostrich. A whole ostrich. The moment of truth. I'm actually quite nervous. That skin, my goodness. 18 hour slow cooked, slow smoked ostrich. Ha! That is called Happy Days. Delicious. Very tender.